How can I forgive when somebody's going to see my children with their hair nappy? And think that daddy did something wrong. In order to do this forgive and forget thing, we have to do something. We have to realize that God sees that wife in the times that she cannot speak to her husband. He knows the issues inside her body and inside her past that have made her depressed or lonely or scared or, or whatever the situation is. And when God looks at her, all he sees with his spiritual glasses is that's my child. That's the one I love. I'm going to give my son to die for her. And in that covenant marriage relationship, the husband going to have to learn how to look at the wife with the same eyes that God is looking at her with. you got to forgive. When you ask the wife, well, what is the problem? How come you're sitting around? And how come the children has napping? Now, see, I'm from the South, so that's a cardinal offense. You know, some of y'all look like, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? <laughs> Daddy says it's a big deal, it's a big deal. You ask him what's wrong, he doesn't listen. He comes in making a list of demands of what's not here and what's here and what's not this and what's not that and what I didn't do. I didn't have a chance to tell him that I was in so much pain that I could barely roll out of bed. That when mama was supposed to come over, she ran late going to a bingo game and all I could do was have the children come over to me and I just rubbed it over the head with a little grease and that's the best I could do. In other words, we've got to learn how to forgive and let God do the fixing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We got to forgive because that is the price God had to pay for our sins. You know, the evildoer can sometimes be those three, me, myself, and I. I know I have not been perfect all the time. Amen. And every time somebody else does me wrong, I got to think about how I did God wrong. Some of the things that I've made up have been quite creative, as you might can imagine. Some of the places I found myself were not church. Some of the things that have come out of my mouth have not been prayers. And when I think about how God has looked at me with his eyes of forgiveness, his yeah, yeah. eyes of love, his eyes of compassion, I have to change my focus and stop worrying about what my enemy's doing. It's about what am I doing? I've got to lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. I've got to remember that my help comes from the Lord. I've got to remember that if the Lord could save a wretch like me, Hallelujah. He might just be able to save the one that's attacking me right now. I'm going to forgive him and then let God deal with him. The Bible says in there that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then it says that uh, uh, there is a way for God to deal with this. Our righteousness is going to shine like the noonday sun when it's all over with. Now that's where the inheritance comes in. God has made a whole heap of promises that we're sitting around waiting for. We talk about, Sister Wiley used to say, I'm still standing, standing on the promises of God. Well, if God says that the evildoer will be cut off, it may not mean that that person's life is going to end. God doesn't go around striking people down, but what he might do is as God is pulling you up from the miry clay, he might cut off somebody that's holding you back now. Forgive them and forget about it. Let it go. As bad as it was. Because God had to cut you off some stuff. And some of us are still here right now because he cut us off from our evil and brought us into his harvest of souls for Christ. Somebody ought to just give God a little praise if you're saved. God knows that we 
hit rock bottom and he knows that we've had to fret, but he says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him and he will bring your righteousness to pass. See, I'm about to get excited and Brother Small is going to help us out with that. Ain't flat in the middle here. I praise God for him, but see, I know that there's at least one reality check that everybody knows about. You're going to go with me, aren't you? It is Sunday morning in a black church in Inglewood, so I believe we can have a little bit of church, can't we? I believe that Jesus had to do a reality check. I believe that Jesus had to think about it when he was being lied on in trial after trial. I believe that Jesus might have had to do a little fretting when they had begun to whip him up and down his body. I believe that Jesus had to fret a little bit when he found himself being accused and yet he was innocent of every crime and sin. Oh Lord, I believe that Jesus might have had to fret a little bit when he looked down and saw that I was doing something I wasn't supposed to do. I believe that Jesus had to fret a little bit when he found us stepping outside our marriages, when he found us saying things to our so-called friends, when he found us filling our bodies with every spirit but the Spirit of God. I believe that the Lord had to fret sometimes when he found us being disrespectful to Mama, keeping our rooms unclean, and going out with a nappy head of hair. I believe that uh, Jesus had to fret sometime uh, when he realized that he would be betrayed by one of his best friends. Hey, Lord, hey. But then I know that Jesus had to just take a moment and write that reality check and say, you know what? I'm going to forget about all that. I'm not going to worry about you because I got better plans for you. Jesus said that I'm a little bit smarter than you. I've been able to peek over the edge of eternity and I know where you're going. I know what you've been trying to do, but I know what God is getting ready to do. So I'm going to forget about what you said when you blaspheme my name. I'm going to forget that I'm hanging here between two criminals. I'm going to forget about the way that you put a crown of thorns on my head and caused my blood to flow. I'm going to forget about the lies that you told. I'm going to forget about the money that you stole. Father, forgive them. 